Hello all. Welcome to the Indie Ocean. And hot on the heels of my coverage of WozHack recently, we're going from that sort of nouveau, side-scrolling, platformy type of adventure roguelike, and plunging back into the past to the traditional form of roguelike with Brogue. That's right, this is Brogue. And from my understanding of it, it's um, a sort of modern age updating of the original Rogue, which, while probably not the first game of its type, um, was the definitive one that sort of... It defined the genre and it, of course, lent its name to the term roguelike. Now, don't take my word for Brogue being a, a sort of updating of Rogue. That's just something I've read. So don't blame me if it's not accurate. Anyway, let's go into New Game. The first thing you'll notice is that it's all in ASCII characters. That's right, it really is a traditionalist. If you're not clear on this, then um, procedurally generated dungeon crawls in the, in the style of Rogue and others, NetHack, that kind of thing, traditionally um, are represented in ASCII characters. With your character as a little at symbol. You can see me near the bottom of the screen here. I'll move back and forth a bit so you can see. There we go. And some of these things are walls. Some of them are, are just sort of texture. Like those curly things that look like flowers or something. That They're just sort of general vegetation. They're nothing in particular as far as I can tell. Um, and of course we've got a gaping chasm in the middle of the room here. Now, a lot of roguelikes, particularly very, very, very low-budget roguelikes, stick to the traditional ASCII character display. And it, that's always kind of bugged me. I don't particularly like it. And um, roguelikes that use graphical tile sets are becoming increasingly common. But a lot of purists still prefer this sort of display. And this is nothing if not a purist traditional roguelike. It doesn't have skill development or or tech trees or anything like that. It's all about items and stuff. It's also very hard. Uh, okay, let's have a walk around. So, I'm navigating using the number pad. I find that the easiest. Um, I think you can use the arrows as well, yeah. Um, but, of course, with the arrow keys, you don't have any diagonal movement, where you do with the number pad. Now, what I did when I first started playing Brogue was I walked around like this, going, okay, all right, there's a door, let's go through the door. Oh, a corridor. And I walked around like this. Okay, here's another uh, foible of very traditional roguelikes. Items and enemies are represented by characters. So that musical note is... Uh, I think it's a potion. Maybe it's a scroll. Um, let's see. Yeah, you now have a scroll entitled Nidge Nidge Snarg. So musical notes are scrolls. And that K is an enemy. I think it's a kobold with a K. So we'll just walk over and attack it. Boom! Done. Killed it in its sleep. Excellent. Hang on, I'll move my mouse pointer off to the side. There you go. Um, ugh. Although you can move using the mouse as well, so that'll now give us this annoying trail. Ugh. We may just have to put up with the mouse pointer being on the screen. Alright. Um, so yeah, this was how I originally uh, played this. But then I discovered the auto-explore option where playing Brogue becomes an exercise in holding down the X key. Watch. Here we go. Yeah, I'm just holding down X here. And basically, well, you can press it, but it doesn't always work properly, so I prefer to hold it. Um, and basically, you'll stop auto-exploring when you discover something interesting, like an enemy. But otherwise, the game itself will navigate you around the floor, picking up items and discovering the layout. Let's do it again. There we go. And there's a jackal ahead of us there. Let's kill that. So that's all good. I don't think we've picked up anything particularly exciting yet. A bit more auto-exploring. And there's another kobold. Oh god, lots of enemies. So I'm going to run back this way. Fight the jackal, now it's on its own. The kobold seems to have vanished. More auto-exploring. X. Okay, another kobold just to the right there. So kill that thing off. Exclamation mark represents... 
Cyan Potion. You can see the um, reports on what's going on at the top of the screen there. So you can see this is a very, very traditional sort of game. And one of the awkward things about it, coming from someone who's accustomed to playing games with controllers, or at least mouse control, is the interface with the inventory. Now, I believe you can play most, if not all, of Brogue using the mouse. But I find that quite clumsy. I find movement clumsy using the mouse. Um, and the keyboard is the less clumsy form of control, but it's still quite awkward. Watch as I pop up my inventory. Here we go. There's all the stuff in my inventory. And to access it, you have to type the appropriate letter. So I'm going to read the Nij Nij Snarg scroll, which is item E. Let's hit E. And then we get our options. Throw, drop, apply, or call. I don't know what call does. But apply basically means use. So here we go. We'll try the scroll. In true roguelike fashion, they're all mysteries, and almost all of them are harmful. It must have been a scroll of remove curse, it says. So that will now come up as a scroll of remove curse if we discover any of those scrolls again in future. So let's do some more auto-exploring. And this will continue until basically there's nowhere left to go on the floor. I found that auto-explore will also fight for you if you insist on pressing it down when you come against come up against an enemy. Uh, but that's generally not advisable. You do want a little bit of your own input into combat. So, um, where's the downward staircase? There should be one around somewhere. I don't remember spotting it. Ah, there it is. You can see... Oh, there's a jackal! Ah, kill the jackal. Okay. You can see up here, sort of to the right... I'm heading towards it here. There we go. Sort of a, a greater than arrow there. That's a downward staircase, so let's go down. We could just jump down the hole in the middle of the level, but we'd sustain damage when we hit the floor. Okay. So this is basically Brogue. Um, there are some other things. Like, there are often traps, for instance. Um, which obviously are... Oh god! Auto-explore dropped us down a hole. Damn you, auto-explore! So now we've landed on the floor below, sustained some damage. And we've got a jackal on us immediately. Kill it, kill it. Oh, we're down to less than 40% health. Okay, let's have a look at the inventory. Have we picked up any better equipment? Not really. Um, like many roguelikes, there are throwable weapons. You can see item C there is 15 darts, which we can press T to throw at enemies. But you have to hit T and then select the dart item anew from the list every single time you want to throw something. It's pretty awkward. Uh, we don't have any new equipment, but that's okay. Let's read the scrolls. Scroll F. Read it. Brilliant flash of red light. It must have been a scroll of cause fear. Well, as long as it hasn't caused me fear, I don't mind. And let's read scroll G. The one remaining scroll. It has a map! Okay, so we don't really need to waste our time exploring. We can just head straight for whatever it is we want on this floor. So we've got a turquoise potion. Let's take that um, in case it's a healing potion, because our health is pretty low. Potion of hallucination. Oh, great. So you can see immediately around me the colours are flashing... Um, the walls are flashing weird colours. And enemies and other things represented by icons. You can see it there. Every turn it changes into something else. That rotating letter there. Ugh. So there's no idea. No clue what it is, really. Kill it. Alright. It was a centipede, as it turns out. Oh my god! We went down. I didn't even realise there was a downward staircase. Oh no, it was an upward staircase. Oh yes, because we fell down from the previous floor. All right, so let's have a look around. Auto-explore a bit. So anyway, basically, this is Brogue. It's completely free. I'll link in the description to where you can get it from. And I don't see the point in devoting much time to sitting and playing it. Maybe if you're a fan of very, very pure, very, very traditional roguelikes, it might appeal to you. Um, but I don't see the point in sitting and playing it when there are much more engaging and sort of um, refined and thoroughly developed roguelikes around. Having said that, it does have a niche. Um, I find it's quite handy for playing, for instance, during my lunch break, 
because runs tend to be quite short. Um, I generally hold down... Oh, there's a monkey there. We can free this monkey. Free the captive monkey, yes. And then it'll try and fight enemies for us. Um, I find that my runs in Rogue tend to last about 10 minutes at the most before I get killed. So basically just sitting down, pressing X for a while, and occasionally interacting with my infantry is a fairly mindless um, but untaxing form of entertainment for short breaks, like a lunch break or a coffee break or something like that. So Rogue does have its place. Brogue, rather, does have its place. And it is free, so I can't complain about value, but it does feel like it's kind of lacking something compared to a lot of other more refined and more advanced roguelikes. So this has been Brogue. Thanks, as usual, for watching. And rejoin me the next time as I'll cover more games. I seem to be on a roguelike bender at the moment, so you might see more of those, or it might be something completely different. Come back and find out. Bye for now.